A personal ambition with the fate of 200 million Nigerians. Bola Ahmed Tinubu declares intentions to run for president. We'll take a look at the varying ambitions in the build up to the next general elections. And away from the elections, we did also look, took a look at a possible outbreak of Lassa fever in Nigeria. How red is Nigerian health system for another health crisis? And as always, we will be looking through the newspapers and having a review of the biggest stories making headlines across the country. And yes, we say thanks for joining us on The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. I am Osao Gye Ogbonwa. And I am Messi Bopo. It's good to have you join us as always. Absolutely. It's uh, looking like it's going to be a very interesting day with the conversations that we have uh, from politics to healthcare. Uh, of course, uh, we will be starting a little later with uh, the discussions concerning those who have personal ambitions to be president. And uh, of course, uh, those who have also um, stepped up you know, and met with Mr. President to declare that they would like to run for president. Uh, we will be talking about that, of course, Balame Tinubu and uh, the governor of uh, Boeing State, Dave Omahi, at the top two who have made such declarations. We'll be looking across uh, those uh, presents and, of course, other people who might be aspiring to be president of Nigeria in 2023. And aside that, we're going to be looking at healthcare also as we deal with the pandemic, uh, COVID-19. Nigeria also faces a seeming upsurge in Lassa fever cases. And that also comes up as uh, part of our conversations this morning. But as always, we start with top trending stories. And uh, we're beginning this morning with, of course, uh, uh, condolences to the family of uh, late Chief Ernest uh, Shonekon, who passed on yesterday at the age of 85. If you remember, uh, clearly he was president for just 83 days before pu being pushed out by uh, General Sanya Bacha in November 1993. He took over from, um, well, after the June 12 ele elections were annulled, um, and, um, you know, stayed there for just 82, 83 days before being kicked out. I also read the letter that he had um, written and uh, shared with the Nigerian uh, uh, people um, when um, he was about to resign in uh, November 1983. And he basically was stating that um, he wishes Nigeria goes um, in the right direction. Um, it didn't seem like he was in the right place at the right time. And, you know, with that, he regrets to... Um, formally now resign from this position and of course you know everyone at that point knew that it wasn't a resignation that you know came from him but instead uh, he was uh, seemingly forced out of uh, office by general late general Sania Bacha who eventually passed on in 1998 and you know a, a lot of persons have also described that he as uh, you know the fact that he was ousted by general Sania Bacha and uh, well, I, I think that after that, it, it feels like it's one head of state, you know, the ninth, as you would want to describe, that hasn't really surfaced, you know, after a while. I haven't really seen him getting back just as like his counterparts. I mean, you find Olu Shaguno Basanjo, you yeah. know, former president of Nigeria, and amongst others, President Muhammad Buhari, you know, and the likes, and, you know, Babangida himself making statements. Uh, but, but he's been quite very, you know, away from the uh, political scene since the ousting in 1993. And I, I also read, you know, some of the letters that have been sent by president, current president and former president describing, you know, him, his departure at this time where the country actually needs him. But I really don't mm. know. A lot of persons have not really agreed with that because, like I said, he's been very low-key. I mean, you probably almost not want to remember that, you know, there was an NS Shona Khan at the time. It's but however, uh, it's okay. I, I think that when we leave, because usually this is a matter of life and death. It just shows that everybody would die eventually. But what would you be remembered for? Absolutely. Uh, that's always what we should have at the back of our mind as we leave our lives. Well, I mean, it, I think it's a it's an expected political statement from Nigerian leaders. When a person passes, they would always write that statement. It probably is already um, stored somewhere. They just bring it out and change the names and the dates. Um, and say, you know, you know this? this person has passed when Nigeria needs him the most. Because I've seen <laughs> it so many times, um, you know, when Nigeria needs you the most. But I agree with you. Mm. And I think that a lot of people should have taken, you know, borrowed a leaf from Ernest Shinekon. When you are done with being president or head of state, go home and rest. Mm. And that's why Nigeria is currently where it is, because people have refused to, to go, go home and rest. 
Retire. Stay with your family. Stay go with your kids. Farm. Enjoy. Go to the farm. You know. Enjoy the benefits of being head of state and the millions and millions of naira that you know that that uh, it costs Nigeria to take care of you every year. Take a vacation. Yeah. Relocate. Go somewhere. Leave the country. You, you know, know because most times we we find out that uh, being le le leader, uh, they probably really not have time. I mean, being a president of the country is not a joke. So it takes a lot. Head of state, whatever, two days, three days. It's a lot of work already. Take a holiday. And because people don't take holidays, they don't allow for fresh ideas. They don't allow for fresh, you know, innovation. I mean, they don't allow others to come through in this. And, the and that's, that's why I'm saying, you know, pretty much the same thing. When you're done with being head of state, even if you were head of state in 1922, um, rest. Go home. Stay, well, but that was before, before Nigeria. <laughs> you know, but the, the point is, stay mm. away. Mm. You know, and let those fresh new heads, the fresh minds take over the country and lead Nigeria forward. The reason, and you know, I've said it earlier, the reason we are where we are today is mostly because we have had persons that have been president before, been heads of state before, been major political bigwigs in the country, refuse to let the country move forward. They have held on. And since 1960, we have continued to recycle the same names. These people refuse to accept that they are, in the, they are almost 100 years old. They keep telling them us that they are 76 or they are 71. These persons are as old as can can. And can we're imagine. getting very close to seventy one, um, so it feels like we probably might just be age based. Thank you. So <laughs> some of these persons need to take, you know, borrow, you know, leave from Enesheneko, and, and there's a couple of others. I think it was about two weeks ago that I made uh, similar statements. Someone who had passed, I don't remember who it was. Uh, um, I would remember. It, you know that I was saying, you know, I didn't even know this person was still in the political scene because he's been quiet. Um, so please do us you know, a favor when you are done. Don't come back as. No, reform but, but, Democrats. Don't but, come back as... But do you also think, you know, with experience now, a lot of people would say that, you know, there's not, there's really nothing that NS Shonekon had actually contributed. I mean, the fact that after that happened, you can't categorically, you know, pinpoint, pinpoint him to any... Well, so, to anything, be honest, it was, only there for, it was only there for about eight, two days, eight, three days. No, I'm just saying that much. afterwards, maybe he could have contributed, not necessarily being at the forefront, mm -hmm. but maybe speak up against but, all of the eels. But it's the same thing that I'm saying. Um, there's a couple of these people that I've mentioned that I have in mind now that are, didn't necessarily take over, you know, as president, but their names have continued to contribute to the discussions concerning Nigeria. They've continued to bring back those same archaic military style, you know, ideas that have kept Nigeria where it is today. And so those are the ones I'm referring to. The ones that eventually became president again, the ones that didn't become president, but their names are still still there. Um, I wouldn't call any names, no, but they know look, themselves. Look. There are certain people that you can, when you hear the name, you know that this one is definitely one of those people who was there when Nigeria was a toddler. And it's still there when Nigeria is, is you know, starting to have um, Pakistan disease at, at old age. Um, the point is, <laughs> the point is, when you are president, if you were president 30 years ago, 25 years ago, 28 years ago, take and you're done, take a break. Let new, fresh minds lead Nigeria. Look at 2023 as elections. We're still having 76-year-old, 80-year-olds and the likes, 85-year-olds trying to be president. And these are people who have been there for ages. But you, also know, but you also know the, the argument because yesterday, I mean, that was also part of, you know, top trending conversation. And it's a good thing that we're going to be having that conversation this morning sometime in the course of this show. But um, you, you see, because if you want to put out all of that argument, the Constitution gives everyone the right. I'm not, I'm not saying all... it's illegal. No, no, no. I'm, 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 not, I'm not saying it's all legal. But I mean, you, because this is a moral issue now. This is like, you should think about it. You get to a particular age, take a, take a, take a break. It's like your grandpa, grandma, just go on holiday, spend time with the kids, and just rest. That's what everyone expects. Because with the age, I mean, medically, it's been said that the, you grow older, um, you know, the body system begins to deteriorate and uh, will not be performing at a a certain level uh, so that's the expectation but if you also want to look at it legally that would begin to say you know fundamentally it's their right because the constitution no, has not put up no no that's I what i'm saying said, that's what i'm saying said maybe we need right. to get to a point where we have to amend the constitution and then begin to say we need to put the age would we need to put age limit and put that stopper for the fact that if you look at it medically i mean without medically 
naturally, logically thinking, you would just think that the more you grow older, the, the energy you begin to lose, the zeal, the zest, you know, to perform. I mean, the physical fitness we're talking about. Well, the person that said that he's tired and he's, he's tired. Of course, of he should seven, be tired. Seven hours a, 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 a day. It, it's but. not a joke. Uh, it's not really a joke. I mean, the president, but on the normal day, if, the president, if the president says he's tired, he probably should have resigned. Oh, yeah. He, he, well, let me. I'm just saying, if the, you were tired, um, you walk. If the kitchen is too hot, just take a bow. Well, um, the, the moral of this conversation is there's some other angle that I'm going to bring up also. Um, um, but the moral of the story is everybody should please borrow a leaf from an Ernest a late Ernest But, but, but they can done, be passive. Can they be passive? Don't be, don't be anything. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't remember, I don't remember um, uh, Judge um, uh, Bush's father, you know, and at any point, you know, still trying to influence any election. We don't have all of that he information. Has, no, I'm, I'm sure that I don't remember him being in the news influencing any elections. No, but you know how age. they call these persons undertakers? They're, they're the king makers, they're just behind the scenes. Don't be king maker. That, that's the point that I'm trying to make. Let the Nigerian people move on. Let the Nigerian people make be, the king. Exactly. No, who's making anybody a king maker? That, they're, that, they're king makers, and that's why politics is the way it is. Oh, of course, we move away. Um, Amoyle Shawari also uh, shared his thoughts on NSH and Khan, called him a betrayal, said that he betrayed uh, MKO Abiola and betrayed Nigeria's quest for democracy um, in 1993, oh, well, after the annulment of the June 12 elections. Anyway, um, rest in peace once again to uh, Chief NSH Khan. Let's move over to something more cheerful now. Uh, Tunde Onakoya, his name has become extremely popular in the last few months here in Nigeria, mostly because of a... Uh, a journey that he started a few months ago, maybe even earlier, uh, taking young Nigerians uh, from the slums, you know, and gi giving them a chance at a better life. He, of course, became extremely popular on social media when he went to the slums and the, um, uh, the they call it Osho the Under Bridge, and took a couple of young Nigerian teenagers who had no life, no, you know, possibility of a, a future, and took them, you know, and uh, set up a chess championship. Um, under the bridge in Oshodi, eventually crowned one of them um, a champion of uh, chess. Um, it got very, very popular. Nigerians, of course, donated to their cause. Uh, it's called the Changing Lives Through Chess. Um, and, of course, he raised millions and millions of naira, about 10, 12, 15 million, I can't remember, um, in, in that period, you know, to support the idea of changing lives through chess. And, of course, taking some of these young Nigerians that the country seemingly has abandoned and giving them a chance at a better life. Um, but that's not, you know, why we're talking about him this morning. Aside that, a few days ago, he posted a picture of a young boy that he picked up also on the streets. That's him when he was found and then took him in to live with, uh, with um, him, uh, Tunde now. Um, start up, you know, started you know, taking care of this young boy, uh, sending money back home to his family and also um, got him registered in school to you know start going to school and so he picked it he posted pictures of you know when he met him and where he is today that's exactly the picture of the young boy going to school and this got a reaction from one of the world's biggest celebrities Paris Hilton uh, she quoted the tweet and you know stated that she uh, you know read through it and of course it got her um, crying um, she of course went on to encourage um, people across the world uh, to donate to changing lives through chess. And of course, uh, Paris Hilton got Tunde Onakaya, Onakoya, I beg your pardon, and of course, this young boy, worldwide exposure. And so we are celebrating him this morning. Yeah, for of all the work that he's done. Yeah, he's a, he, and you know, interesting for me is the fact that he's a very young man. I'm, I'm quite impressed and, you know, very. Um, challenged and inspired by his humanitarian work. Now, in all of this, the letter he wrote to the teacher, because according to him, yesterday was the very first day in school, and he wrote, you know, he sent this open letter to the teacher. I'd like to read it quickly, and he says, Dear teacher, it is the first day of the rest of your lives, and I thought to share a few things concerning Odun Ayor and Sunday with you. Teach them that they've got the whole world in their hands, and they have the power to create their own future. Teach them that it's possible to do great things from small place. Teach them not to be afraid to make mistakes and fail over and over again. Teach them to be curious and question everything. Remember that if they are not learning the things the way you teach them, then you must teach them in the way you can learn. Help them to develop a love for learning so they can also look forward to the next class. Teach them to be kind, patient, and loving. Teach them about the wonders of books and how they can explore the world. Teach them how to 
have faith in their own ideas and remember never to give up on them because their future might just depend on it. And that's so beautiful. One letter I have actually read over and over again and it just, you know, puts a lot of smile on my face. And I imagine the teacher learning. <laughs> no, <laughs> you don't have to be like that. <laughs> but it, it depends on. It no, depends that's on that's the not going to happen. Because I can imagine the stereotype Nigerian teacher reading like, hmm, teach who? Please, 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 please. Okay. No, he's just he's just fantastic. I mean, he's an amazing guy. You're doing a great job, and we really appreciate you. We see what Absolutely. you're doing, and we encourage you. And we also ask that you know people should support you know government at this point. This is it is not a joke. You, oh, he also mentioned the fact that. You know, when he went there, he saw not just the boy. He had to even see where the boy lived at the time he visited. And I saw a picture yeah. of it. Re Osaka, really, really You sad. cannot believe that people leave there. Oh, I can. Oh, no. You know, say, my man, I'm like, do people really live here? Yeah. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. it, it looks like where, even where people you have... under the bridge. Oh, no. I mean, the place that he took the chess uh, championships oh, to, no. that, you know, that's what started all of this before he eventually shared that picture. Um, it, it was under the bridge in Oshodi, and that's where they live, those boys. I can only imagine, you know, how he feels. I mean, the fulfillment he has. And I, I, I was, you know, looking at that story and reading everything. And the fact that the, the girl had a sister who is also living with the mom right now, yeah. and she's also resuming school. And that's so much yeah. of, you know, uh, work for humanity, it's respect really for human life, very inspirational. And that's why I said, you know, talking about the death of Enes Shonekon, that, uh, you know, while we live our life on earth, we should be remembered for something when we're not alive. So the question yeah. would be, what are you doing now that is impacting human Absolutely. life? Absolutely. And of course, once again, you know, the last uh, post that he made showing that young boy was what got him worldwide and international exposure um, after Paris Hilton. I'm um, going to cry. Uh, quoted, uh, quoted um, you know, that tweet and then encourage other people to support their cause. Um, there's a GoFundMe page also that has been opened, or account rather has been opened uh, for changing lives through chess. So today we're celebrating Tunde Onakoya. We're also celebrating the Nigerian Super Eagles, uh, which comes up next on our Top Trending Stories, um, giving us a very, very beautiful victory yesterday. Not just uh, one uh, nil victory against Egypt, uh, but also because they were able to display very confident, very beautiful football. I didn't get to watch the match, but you know, but I saw a lot of comments. I saw a lot of um, you know highlights also from the game, and um, um, a goal scored by Kelechi Anacho eventually gave Nigeria a victory yesterday at uh, Afcon in Cameroon. So congratulations to the Super Eagles. I'm sure uh, Wally Scott will have a lot to say about this game uh, yesterday, and of course express himself. And because I remember we had a conversation about with Wally Scott, and he was talking about uh, how Austin Egwavoin should be the man for the job. So I think you know that this... that actually transpired. You know, because you see a lot of people say there's a shift of mental, I mean, mentality, mental play. Uh, you could see the mindset. The, the, there's a lot of togetherness. They yeah. were very coordinated, and you know, passionate at the time. Even though there's a lot to improve on. But it was really a great performance. Some people had said that this is a performance they haven't seen in a long oh, time. Absolutely. In a very, yes. very long time. And I'm mean, quite impressive. Because for me, I would probably bet that, you know, the Egyptians were going to, you know, uh, bit Nigeria looking at, you know, the, the, the play. And of course, they you were, know, Egypt was completely outplayed. Nigeria yes. had, a, I think, I'm not sure it was the first or the second half, but we had about 15 shots on goal compared to about four for Egypt. They, yes. they were completely and, and, and you could also see the fact that there was constant dominance of the midfield, you know, by our very own. And uh, that very one that we're not talking about, because Mo Salah was also another thing that, you know, everybody talked about for, you know, the Egyptian side and the fact that Mo Salah was going to score a goal against Nigeria. And trust me, I could probably put my money on that one. But yesterday, I mean, I'm like, what happened? But we saw the fact that Maduka Okoye saved that very goal. You know, the thing that Mo Salah does with his left leg, he did that stuff again. And you could see Maduka, you know, defending that ball with his other leg. And that was quite impressive, you know, a very great performance. Absolutely. And there's a lot Congratulations to Congratulations to the Super Eagles, to Austin, Austin Egoavoy. And it may, might be too early for me to say that we should send, uh, was it the, Hampers. no, the other coach, the foreign coach that we got. Um, uh, you'll say, you'll say. Yeah, you know, it's, it might no, it be, can't be, it might be too early for us to ask. <laughs> To ask that we, you know, change our minds about that contract and send him, you know, back home. You know, and let us like we're going to do the job. Mm -hmm. Too early once again. Uh, but Wally Scott would have a better analysis on this um, for at uh, Plus Sports, which comes up right after the breakfast. That's all we have for to uh, Top Trending. Stay with us. Uh, we're back in just a few seconds with uh, Off the Press. And we'll get to share with you our major stories, making headlines across the uh, newspapers this morning. Welcome once again to The Breakfast.